Release the Quacken! Hey, real quick, something I forgot to mention. Uh, before going on, I um, just want to talk about the controller. I'm using this uh, wonderful Logitech controller. I picked it up at Best Buy for like 30 bucks. Um, the actual controller doesn't matter as much as the driver. Uh, these and the Xbox 360 controllers use the Xbox 360 driver or the uh, X input driver, which has already been uh, implemented, for you, implemented for you within Unreal. Uh, they do not support currently, by default, the uh, PlayStation 4 controllers or um, any, any of those. So if you want to use a uh, PlayStation controller, you're going to have to get the driver. And that's a rabbit hole that I will not be covering in this particular tutorial. Sorry. Um, oh, I got so much time for so much. You can always give a shout out to Epic and complain to them about uh, implementing the appropriate driver. There's a bunch of stuff out there for it though, um, but we will not be covering that here. So just make sure you have either a uh, Xbox 360 controller or one of these, you know, cheapo depot ones that you can pick up at Walmart or Best Buy. All right, and on with the tutorial. Greetings fellow game designers, Ron here at Lame Duck Studios. And today we're gonna go over how to set up a controller there you go. There it is. Set up a controller to uh, use with your widgets. I know in, in Unreal it's a bit of a pain. I'm going to show you how to hook up a controller and have it actually communicate to your widgets. Uh, this is going to be a bit of a series. I'm going to show you how to do one controller. Then I'm going to show you how to do two controllers for both um, local gameplay and for utilizing two controllers within the same widget. So you can use like a character select, that sort of thing. So stay tuned. I'm going to break this up into a few different tutorials and show you how to get through each one. Because I know the documentation out there is terrible, and um, yeah, so I'm gonna go ahead and fix that. And if you check on all the forums, they all tell you a really goofy method, and uh, that, that's not what works. So uh, this will use both controllers. You don't have to worry about any code. This is gonna be all in Blueprint. So for those of you who don't know how to program, it's okay, uh, it'll work. That being said, uh, let's get started. I have a uh, blank project here, and all I want to do is just make some stuff. So this is going to be a bit from scratch, but you don't really need to. This will work for any uh, project. Uh, just some basic stuff, just so I don't have to uh, confuse anybody. Um, what you're going to want, of course, is your game mode. So let's go ahead and make a game mode. Uh, this one's going to be for whatever uh, menu you are utilizing. So, boom, 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 boom. Game mode. I'm just gonna call this you know, my game mode. Traditional stuff, you know, my game mode. And then I also wanna utilize a uh, player controller. So the player controller setup is a bit tricky and we'll get into the details of that. Um, just be aware that the game does have a player controller, but you're gonna wanna create one so you can specify uh, some of the controls. You can really put these controls anywhere, but the player controller makes the most sense. So I'm gonna call this one menu, uh, I'll say my menu controller good good and then of course we need a widget to uh, put stuff in so let's go ahead and make uh, under user interface widget and also call this uh, menu uh, widget all right let's add our game mode to our level so edit project settings maps and modes uh, game mode base. Let's go ahead and put in our game mode. Hit the drop down here. And we don't really need a pawn, but it's fine. And then for the uh, player controller, it's going to be our uh, menu controller. Okay, got my menu controller. That's good and good. Uh, we could create like a hide and throw that to the screen, but I'm not going to do that. I'm actually going to call my, um, my widget through the game mode. You can call that from anywhere you like. So I'll go to my game mode. I'm just going to expand that window. Let's go to the graph here. We'll just do uh, begin play. And uh, up to here, we'll do uh, create widget. All this is basic stuff. You can kind of get anywhere. But just for those who are kind of new to this, uh, we'll load the main menu widget. And then add to viewport. There we go. And that'll get the menu showing up on the screen. So if we hit play, there isn't really anything to show up yet. But if you did, you know, it would appear you know, right here. Uh, to not confuse us by being in an actual level, I'm going to go ahead and clear this out and just make a blank room. So let's go ahead and do a new level. Let's go do an empty level. 
and there we go. So this will be our little menu level for the sake of argument here. Do a quick save, it's gonna ask me all kinds of stuff. Let's go ahead and save the level as well. So save current, and I'll just call this uh, menu. I'll do main menu, sure. So here we go. Uh, real quick, since we did change the level, let's make sure that our um, world settings also gets the game mode. So my game mode. And I really should name this menu game mode in the event that you need to. So I'll do my menu game mode. There we go. Organization. Okay. So let's go ahead and create the widget. So nothing too fancy in the widgets. We're just going to put some buttons in here. You can really put them any way that you want, but if you want them to be uh, in, in a reasonable list, yeah, make them linear or whatever. I'm just going to make them kind of nice looking. I'm going to do a um, vertical box. Now you don't need a vertical box. This will work um, regardless. The way the, the navigation system works in here, it doesn't matter uh, exactly where the buttons are, just so long as buttons are here. I'm going to go ahead and just center this up. Let's do uh, over here on alignment, 0 0.5, 0 0.5. If I'm going a little bit quick, it's okay. Uh, you can always pause the video and go back. All right, inside my vertical box, let's go ahead and add uh, some buttons here. So I'll do a button. I'll just name this button zero. I'm going to take my button zero. I'm going to go ahead and wrap that with a size box. So go down to wrap with and then size box. This will just let you um, define the size of your button so you can make them however big you want. I'm just going to do uh, 50 by 50. And then for my button, uh, that's fine, that's fine. Vertical box is set, should be set to size to content. So size to content. So there's a button. Go ahead and just duplicate my box here. And I get the next one. I'm gonna go ahead and name the new button, uh, button one. So we're gonna use array ordering here. You don't have to, it's just easier to keep track because arrays always start at zero. So button zero, button one, etc. And we have two buttons and that's all we're gonna need for this. Uh, we do want a way to see that we're highlighting the button, so I'm going to create a little highlight for it. So for inside my button, I'm just going to do an overlay. So let's go ahead and wrap the button with an overlay. Where are you at? And then I'll just tell this to fill out. So let's go up to the button, we'll do fill out. And then inside there, I also want to do an image. I'm going to take my image, I'm going to drag it in, I'll put that just right above uh, the button here. Make sure I move it above the button. If we put the image um, in front of the button, we'll have some issues clicking it. So we want the image to be behind it. You can you can set it to be not hit testable, but I find that uh, that still interrupts the, uh, the clicking. And I'll go ahead and just name image. Uh, this will be highlight. I'll do highlight zero. And I'm going to rinse and repeat. I'm actually just going to go ahead and delete this one off and just duplicate uh, this one here. I'm going to duplicate the size box and just rename these to uh, match. So highlight one and then highlight uh, button one. And then for the buttons themselves, just to make it easier to see the highlights, uh, I'm going to go ahead and just give it some padding. So grab the button. Let's do a padding of uh, 10. Actually, let's do, let's do like uh, 3. That's probably more reasonable. And I'll grab the other button. I'll also do a padding of 3. Where are you at? Padding 3. And you can see the image behind it is there, but it's not quite filled out. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. So I'll grab my image. I'll just tell it to fill out. And fill out. Again, you can make these however you like, but that'll be our button and some sort of highlighting to show that we have it selected. Compile it, save it. Now comes for the, uh, the interesting part. So once you have something, we'll come over to our graph here. And we're gonna wanna create an array. So let's go ahead and make 
uh, our buttons here and our highlights we're going to make two different arrays let's go ahead and add a variable i'll call this uh, button list and you can call it button array or wh whatever you want to call it uh, for the type i do button come down to the um, under object types button and grab the object reference and then I'll go ahead and duplicate that. Let's do this as the highlight. I'll do highlight list. And then for the highlight type, this is actually going to be the image. Image. And then image object reference. Grab those. I'll get rid of the pre construct. I don't really need that for now. But on the event construct, we're just going to make the array. So right click we'll do make array now there is a way to do this dynamically I'll, I'll show you that in a later tutorial but for the sake of showing you how this is actually working uh, this will uh, I think be easier for uh, most folks so let's go ahead and do the add pin we'll drag button 0 to the first spot button 1 to the second spot again array ordering 0 is 1 and 1 is 0 or 1 is 2 and we will set that to our button list. Uh, make sure that we change this to array type bot, by the way. So down here for our button, uh, let's set this little uh, dot here. We'll make that an array type. I'll do that for the uh, image as well, for our highlight as well. Drop it in. Uh, fix my OCD. Ah, better. Let's go and get another make array. And this will be the highlight. Highlight zero, highlight one. Grab the highlight list. Drag it in. Okay, so that's good for that. Let's go ahead and make um, how this is going to work. So off of our event tick. I'm going to go ahead and drag out. Let's go ahead and do a sequence. From our sequence, let's do a uh, for each. And we want to look for our uh, button array here. So grab our button list, set that in. Off of that, we're going to check to see if the object has focus. Let's do a branch. And from here, let's grab our array element, and we're going to go and do um, has keyboard focus. And this is going to determine whether or not the keyboard can see it. Let's go ahead and drag in our highlight, um, highlight list here. Do a get. And then off of the highlight list, I'm also going to do a get copy. And we're going to have uh, one for the hidden. Uh, so let's do visibility here. Set uh, visibility. Make one more of those. So if it has focus, it will be set to visible. And if it does not have focus, it will be hidden. We'll just go ahead and plug in our references here. And we're going to use the button list um, array position to determine the highlight. Because button 0 and highlight 0 will have the same index. Ahead and move this out just a bit. Okay. And if we play from here, we should be able to uh, click and see our buttons highlighting. And oh, let's go ahead and make sure we set this to uh, hidden for our second one. And at this point, we should be able to compile. Let's go ahead and save it. I'm going to play this in the uh, output window, so hit the drop down, let's do a new window with pi. Okay, and then of course from here you can see that we have, if I click, it highlights, changes position. Awesome, awesome. You also notice if you use your arrow keys, it works, because we have keyboard focus. And if you take your controller at this point and use your up and down on the D-pad or even the analog stick, you have input because the controller uses the keyboard mappings to figure out where it's at. Uh, but you'll find what you can't do 
is use your WASD keys to uh, adjust your position. So we're going to have to set that up, which we'll do in the next tutorial. Uh, go ahead and save this here, and I shall see you in the next one. Hey guys, we have done it. We're at a thousand subscribers, and I have you to thank for it. Thank you, thank you. Awesome. Misty and I both appreciate it. Maybe I should have called the studio Fuzzy Kitty Productions. Uh, that being said, of course, uh, I want to remind you that we are taking a vote for what project I should work on next. Um, big kind of project for the channel, whether it's going to be you know, a fighting game or puzzle adventure or whatever. Uh, check it out in the link in the description to the, on the Patreon. Um, head over there. It's free. Just you know, vote on it. Um, also, I want to give a, a quick shout out to Garav Barari. Hopefully I'm pronouncing that correctly. Uh, Garav decided to make a, a wonderful uh, logo uh, as a way of saying thank you for all the work that I do, which is very, very appreciated. Uh, here it is. I think it's beautiful. Uh, I love how the uh, the beak is the L and the D is the is the head, and um, you know Lame Duck just kind of pops out, and you know Studio takes a back seat. Uh, it makes it makes the cartoony logo uh, a little bit more mature, which is which is kind of cool. Um, so again, uh, Gaurav, thank you very much. That was very awesome. And uh, stay tuned. Keep watching, and I shall see you in the next one.